If a Christian gives a prophetic word to someone and that word turns out to be inaccurate, is that enough in and of itself to label that person a false prophet? Now, I'm talking about your well-meaning believer, your brother and sister in Christ who thinks they're hearing something from the Lord and they share it with somebody and it's like, "Mm, no, that wasn't for me. Is that person a false teacher or false prophet? In full disclosure, this is my second recording of this video. I tried to put it out earlier this morning, but upon reading some of your comments and feedback, it became very clear to me there was some confusion. I didn't do the best job of presenting this and explaining to you the point of the video and where I am coming from. So I don't mean to come across and didn't want to come across as if I was defending false prophecy or inaccurate prophecy, because God knows that is not my heart whatsoever. But rather, ask the question, is that all it takes? Is there more fruit or another metric that we should be looking at to measure whether someone is a false prophet or not? And what does the Bible say about who a false prophet is? We ought to cut to the chase. A false prophet is not for you. A false prophet is someone who comes in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are a ravenous wolf, like Jesus says in Matthew chapter 7. 2 Peter chapter 2 says that they exploit you with false words, or in the NLT it says, in their greed they will make up clever lies to get a hold of your money. They are very sensual people. Jude says that they pervert the grace of our God into sensuality. Matthew 24, 24 says that many false Christs and false prophets will arise and perform great signs and wonders, and they're going to be real, and they're going to be accurate. Revelation chapter 2, and he says, you're tolerating Jezebel, who calls herself a prophetess and is teaching and seducing my servants to practice sexual immorality. And there's so many more descriptive passages about who false prophets actually are and what their character is actually like. And y'all, these people are not Christians. They come appearing as sheep, appearing as brother and sisters in Christ, but inwardly they are ravenous wolves. They are not for you. These people want to exploit you. These people want to take advantage of you. And ultimately they want to mislead you and lead you astray. So when I pose the question of, you know, is it enough to call somebody a false prophet based on missing a prophecy or getting it wrong? I'm thinking of texts like this. First Thessalonians chapter 5, 19 through 21. Do not not quench the spirit. Do not despise prophecies, but test everything and hold fast to what is good. Now, this is important to understand the context of what's happening in Thessalonica at this time. Why would Paul tell them not to despise prophecies? Well, believe it or not, we have a lot more in common today with these people. One commentary says this, it's very possible that prophecy was being despised because individuals were abusing the gift. There were idlers among the Thessalonians, perhaps who spiritualized their idleness with prophecy. There were date setters and end time speculators among the Thessalonians, perhaps who backed up their speculations with supposed prophetic authority. Does that sound familiar at all? So these people were fed up with all of the wrong and incorrect words, people predicting the end times and setting dates when the Lord would come back. That's what they were dealing with. So Paul comes and says, don't quench the spirit and don't despise prophecies, but test everything and hold fast to what is good. Y'all, this implies that there's going to be some words given sometimes from brothers and sisters in Christ, not these people I just described, that are corrupted in mind and heart, these wolves in sheep's clothing, but these well-meaning brothers and sisters who are going to say something, but their flesh or emotions get involved and get in the way. So he says to hold fast to what is good. In 1 Corinthians chapter 14, Paul says, let two or three prophets speak and let the others weigh what is said. In 1 John 4, 1, he says, Beloved, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits to see whether they are from God. For many false prophets have gone out into the world. So obviously we should test and weigh these words. And y'all, I know what it's like out there. I know what it's like online. And I can relate to the people of Thessalonica. 
when he says, do not despise prophecies. You know, I know this has gotten a lot worse in our day and age. And like 20 years ago, you didn't have to worry about that. But now with these, everybody and anybody can just jump on their phone, get online and become what I call a YouTube prophet and attract a crowd. They do it for money. They do it to amass a following. And yes, it's easy to get frustrated with this. And it's easy to throw out the baby with the bathwater. And the whole point of the video that I was trying to make was to simply show what a true false prophet looks like according to scripture. Because this term false prophet, false teacher, which I've been called more times than I can count when I'm just sharing scripture online. But it gets thrown around way more than it needs to. And we're calling our well-meaning brothers and sisters false teachers and false prophets when they are not. And it's causing us to quench the spirit. Now, listen to what I'm saying very, very carefully. That does not mean that we should just go online and say whatever we want without any consequences. Yes, there needs to be some sort of accountability, and we've talked about this in previous videos. Have someone in your life, in your circle, that's listening to what you're saying, that's watching what you're saying if you're sharing online. And yes, we need to walk in the fear of the Lord and be very careful about everything that we share online, especially if we're putting God name on it. Y'all, I take this platform very seriously. It weighs on me a lot, and that's why I've removed the video from this morning. If it even has a chance to mislead or confuse somebody, I don't want to be a part of it. You know, I would rather take that down and take the L and remake the video and put it out there to clarify than ever mislead or confuse or lead someone astray. But the whole point of this was to get us to see that it's about the intention of the heart. False teachers and false prophets are not for you. They want to exploit you, take advantage of you, and lead you astray, lead you to other gods, lead you to themselves, lead you to a business, lead you to a church, a ministry, whatever it is, all in the name of money, control, and power. Those are the people who have earned the label of false prophet and false teacher according to what scripture says. It's my hope that as the Holy Spirit gives us discernment and as we test the spirits moving forward, that we wouldn't so casually as believers toss around this label of false prophet and false teacher that has some very serious implications. If you're not subscribed to the channel, I would sincerely appreciate it and ask you to hit that like button. That's the thumbs up button and that tells YouTube to send this video out to more people. But thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one.